One thing I really don't miss about Canada is stop signs. Putting stop signs everywhere is a sign of failure. It's the road design equivalent of we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Nobody completely stops at stop signs. Not cyclists, not drivers. This guy doesn't even bother to slow down. Stop signs are notoriously inefficient. After a string of police ticketing, cyclists in San Francisco staged a protest where every cyclist came to a complete stop at this stop sign. The queue of bicycles and cars stretched several blocks down the street. But stop signs aren't just inconvenient for cyclists, they're actually less safe. Many cities allow cyclists to yield at stop signs, and studies have been published about the results. This study found 14% fewer crashes. And this one found that when crashes do happen, they result in less serious injuries. So why does this happen? Well, just like people walking, people on bicycles are vulnerable road users, which is the problem when you take laws for cars and try to apply them to bicycles. For example, bicycles are extremely slow to get going from a complete stop. Look at how long I'm in this intersection if I yield at the stop sign. Less than two and a half seconds. Now look at the same crossing if I come to a complete stop. Almost six seconds. That's over twice as much time in the intersection, and that's just the time to cross this little Dutch junction, not some American monstrosity. During that crossing, I'm moving so slowly that I'm a sitting duck for any driver who's not paying attention. Cars have blind spots, like this A pillar right here. This is the reason why stop signs exist, because cars are dangerous and a driver's view can be obstructed. Can you spot the cyclist? She's right here behind the elephant. Bicycles don't have blind spots, which is why there's no difference in safety to other people if a cyclist doesn't come to a complete stop. So why do so many cities keep doing something that is inconvenient, inefficient, and less safe? Well, there's a good reason. You see, those are the rules, and some people made those rules, so people need to follow the rules because the rules are meant to be followed. Any questions? In the Netherlands, the concept of a stop sign was first introduced in 1941 by the German occupation force. However, this first version included a yield triangle and didn't require a complete stop if there was no cross traffic. So if you think people should stop at a stop sign in all cases, you are literally more extreme than the Nazis. Today, the Netherlands is famous for road safety, and yet Nazi signs, I mean stop signs, are very rarely used. This is true for many other European cities as well, Paris, a city of over 2 million people, used to have only one, but it was stolen so often that they stopped replacing it in 2013. They're mostly gone from Brussels too, but there they still have these stop sign traffic light things. Ah, uh, Belgium. Anyway, here's what Dutch junctions look like. Some junctions have priority markings with shark's teeth. If they're pointed towards you, then you need to yield to traffic on the crossroad. This is a typical junction in a residential area. In this case, whomever is on the right gets priority. When speeds are low enough, stop signs become unnecessary, but this is only possible with proper traffic calming. This junction has several elements to ensure slow speeds. The road is brick, which increases road noise, and the road is relatively narrow too. And most importantly, the entire junction is raised up like one big speed bump to slow down cars, even if the driver isn't paying attention. When a minor street intersects with a priority street, a continuous sidewalk is used. I have a whole video about continuous sidewalks that you should watch if you haven't already because they're the best thing ever. The most important part is the ramp is far back from the junction, which ensures a driver will be moving slowly with no signs required. This may seem chaotic to people used to rules and signs, but this arrangement forces slow speeds and forces people to pay attention. One of the problems with human psychology is that people can focus too much on the sign, I stopped so I can go now. But it's not the stopping that's important, it's yielding the right of way. These rules focus the driver on the rule that's actually important. Of course, there are roundabouts too, and I'll make a whole other video about them someday. They are well known for being safer because of their slow speeds and the fact that cars never intersect at a 90 degree angle, resulting in less serious crashes. Though roundabouts are usually used in place of stoplights rather than in place of stop signs. So when should a stop sign be used? Well, at junctions with poor visibility, where it would be safer for a driver to stop. Like this one. But this junction is also marked with zigzag lines, the word stop on the ground, and a speed bump. 
It's nice to not have stop signs, but it's especially nice when cycling, because it makes it possible to take an entire trip without stopping. It's really time for other cities to get rid of stop signs. First for bicycles, and then, as the roads are redesigned to be as safe as the Netherlands, for cars as well. But for now, I'll leave you with some more scenes of life without stop signs.